This week's episode of the Art Tactic Podcast is sponsored by ArtBase. Are you managing an art collection, an artist studio, or a gallery? Is it time to bring your collection management skills up to a professional level? We think so. Well, ArtBase is the right software to manage your art business. ArtBase allows you to track your artworks and contacts in an easy-to-use, powerful database. You just enter your data once and use that data to generate reports, offers, contracts, and much more. They've got a brand new version out with a whole new look that can be used on the cloud from any location on any device. So what are you waiting for? Go to artbase.com now to learn more and be sure to mention Art Tactic for a 15% discount. Over the past 12 years, the Art Tactic podcast has grown to be a leading art market podcast. Each week we share an exclusive in-depth interview with a key art world insider. As we move into a new phase of programming, we want our broadcast to be listener-supported and create content that you want to hear, not what we think you want to hear. You can support us by visiting contribute.to slash art tactic. Thanks for listening to the Art Tactic Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Green. With the contemporary art market doing so well, we wanted to dig deeper into the Chinese art market, which is actually fueling much of this growth, which is especially visible at auction. So in this week's episode of the podcast, we chat with Jamie Yu. She's head of contemporary modern art at Poly Auctions, the leading auction house in China. We discuss several facets of the Chinese art market with her, and she provides a lot of insights into the market for us. So I hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks so much for listening. Jamie, thanks so much for coming on and chatting with us. Thank you, Adam. I'm thrilled to be here and very looking forward to our discussion today. Of course, we are too. So where are you right now? Are you in Hong Kong or where are you? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm in Hong Kong now and uh, well, back to Taiwan for the Christmas holidays. Well, thanks so much again for joining us all the way from Hong Kong. So Poly Auctions turns 10 years old. In case some of our listeners aren't familiar with Polly, tell us a little bit about the auction house and the type of art you sell and really how it fits into the Chinese art market. Um, yes, as you may know, China Poly Group Corporation is a large-scale state-owned enterprise with a comprehensive and diversified business portfolio, of which Poly Auction is part listed as Poly Cultural Group Limited on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. As the leading auction house in China, Poly Auction has also firmly recognized itself as the third runner-up around the globe. So next year is the 10th anniversary of Poly Auction Hong Kong. We have expanded from four special depart, uh, so four specialist departments like uh, modern and contemporary art, fine Chinese painting and uh, calligraphy, Chinese ceramics and works of art, and magnificent jewels and important watches. Now with new aided noble handbags and rare wine, whiskey, and Chinese tea, so we total have six departments now. Yeah, um, for Poly Auction Hong Kong, we have continued to expand the vast domestic and overseas market resources by taking advantage of Hong Kong's privileged position at the intersection of Eastern and Western arts. So we served as an inter- instrumental portal to connect the affluent collectors in China to the greater Asian and the global market. And so as we said, Polly is turning 10 years old. So if you look past over the past decade, what are some of the things that come to mind when you think about maybe the most significant ways the Chinese art market has evolved during this past decade as Polly has been in business? Let me give a short intro on the development of Chinese art market. Comparing to Western art market, Chinese art market is relatively very young but energetic. The history can trace back to Beijing Poly as established in 2005. 
The market is booming even through the financial crisis in 2008 and achieved the peak in 2010 and 11. And uh, 2012 is the year Poly Hong Kong started business. And we saw huge transformation in the past 10 years. For example, different art movement or category was shifted. And that's quite interesting to participate in the progress from realism to contemporary ink or from figurative to abstract. We can see the collector's taste gradually changed and refined in response to changes in the environment. And so right now, the contemporary art market, it appears to be really strong globally, especially for younger emerging artists. For those that are at auction, it seems a lot of the bidding is coming from Asian collectors. Would you say that's accurate? And why do you think you're seeing Asian collectors pursuing these artists aggressively at auction? Yes, I think um, that's the most exciting thing about Chinese art market. We have very young and new buyers every season. They are usually in their 20s to 30s, and the budget is from maybe 1 million to 10 million US dollars, and for very few, even higher. Um, so there are different factors that affect, and also social media and the COVID-19 are encouraging the development. Um, in our observation, not only young collectors are interested in this category. We have some senior collectors used to purchase like antiques or watches before, and also getting familiar with contemporary art and also encouraged by their kids. So that's very interesting um, crossover for now. Yeah, that's really interesting. And on another note, I was curious, how much of a role has social media played for the growing Chinese collector base? Within the US and Europe, Instagram, for example, is a very prominent and popular tool that's being used to discover artists and to see multiple examples of artworks by artists. How do Chinese collectors discover artists who are not yet showing in Asia? Are they using social media a lot for that? Yes, social media is more and more important for now. Um, Before the pandemic happened, social media has played an important role already. And since the travel has been restricted in past two years, most people pay more attention on social media, whether follow the influencers or for celebrities or just simply communicate with friends and families. Same situation happens in mainland China as in Western world, like Instagram, Facebook, and the TikTok, Xiaohongshu. You can see some common characteristics in these contemporary artworks. For example, the, the paintings are usually very recognizable with bright colors and the distinctive style. And when you pause, post on, on the Instagram and you, your friends and your fans will easily get a thumbs up or the heart. So you will receive many feedbacks. So that's why in social media, contemporary artworks are not only the fine arts that one may appreciate. Um, they are already become a pop cultural phenomenon, phenomenon yes. Yeah, and I also wanted to ask you about private museums and foundations in China. We read reports so often about new ones popping up, and it really seems like they're having an influential role within the Chinese contemporary art ecosystem. How significant is their position within that system? Um, yes, n- no doubt the, the academic recognition will help one artist market getting stronger, like um, the current four out of five world records of Yoshitomo Nara are set in this year and uh, um, last year. During his solo exhibition in LACMA and uh, Dallas Contemporary and also in Taiwan. 
because museum take an important educational role to offer the public and the collectors an environment to learn a comprehensive knowledge about the artist. So the same situation in mainland China. Once there is a great solo show at the private museum or foundations, the artist's name becomes popular. While the gallery represented the artist and the collectors create a virtual circle for the ecosystem. And then the market provides positive feedback. So more and more collectors are invested in and the best will get bigger and bigger. So let's benefit everyone and give everyone confident. And lastly, I wanted to ask you, what do you think may be some misconceptions about the Chinese art market that people outside of China may hold as they read uh, about the strong market there? Um, over the last decades, the Chinese art market has gone through every phase that necessary to a market's growth. The collectors today are rational and the, the market is transparent. Yeah, but meanwhile, maybe the economic boom of China impressed the Westerners too deeply. Sometimes um, they still have imagination and very high expectation about uh, Chinese art market. So to be frankly, everything includes art and auction is globalized. You can see the price of an artwork is very stable, whether to be sold in London, New York, or Hong Kong. And the Chinese collectors, or we say greater China, are just like the collectors in Europe or US. The only difference is the cultural preference that makes the art market diverse. And uh, after the very successful autumn sales, we are very optimistic and uh, look forward to the 10th anniversary next year. Yeah, and so I know you just concluded some major auctions that you held in partnership with Philips. Tell us, when are some of the auctions to celebrate that 10-year anniversary next year? Um, next year, we will have um, maybe the, the current plan is in July, and we will uh, move the venue from the Grand, uh, Grand Hyatt Hotel to uh, Hong Kong Exhibition Center. The scale will be much bigger and uh, hope to gather all the collectors uh, supported us the, the last decades and uh, we will have a, a like celebration auction there. Great. Well, Jamie, thanks so much again for coming onto the podcast and sharing your perspective on what's going on in the Chinese art market. If our listeners want to learn more about Polly and maybe follow some of the artworks and lots in your upcoming auctions, what's the website they can visit? Okay. Um, yes, you can put just a uh, polyauction.com.hk. You can find our specialist department and the past records and the upcoming auctions. And thank you so much, Adam. I'm very glad to participate today. Thanks so much again, Jamie. We want to thank ArtBase for sponsoring this week's episode of the Art Tactic Podcast. Are you managing an art collection, an artist studio, or gallery? Is it time to bring your collection management skills up to a professional level? Well, ArtBase is the right software to manage your art business. ArtBase allows you to track your artworks and contacts in an easy-to-use, powerful database. All you do is enter your data once, and you use that data to generate reports, offers, contracts, and a bunch more. They've got a brand new version out with a whole new look that can be used in the cloud from any location on any device. So go to ArtBase.com now to learn more, and be sure to mention Art Tactic for a 15% discount.